This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Only Friends podcast. As you can see, I'm here. I'm in the flesh. And I'm not wearing makeup. Correct. I know. I know you're all disappointed. I'm sad. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I'm not sorry. What ended up happening <laughs> was we did do the makeup yesterday. <laughs> As you can see, uh, I was beautiful. <clears throat> um, but uh, I basically reworked my trip so that I could leave later this afternoon just so I could do this podcast. Uh, actually, truth be told, it was so that I didn't have to fly at 5 a.m. Uh, and I wanted to get a lift in before I left. And then also the podcast. You gotta get that pump in. You gotta get, <laughs> get that pump in. <laughs> Make sure my tits are right, you know? Right? <laughs> um, as far as like the episode goes for uh, me wearing the drag makeup, we filmed it. Uh, the plan was to release it tomorrow. I'm not sure we're going to do that yet. It doesn't seem... I don't, I don't know. Something about it wasn't like great. Uh, we interviewed the, the uh, makeup artist who, um, who did the makeup. He does makeup for himself and, and wears drag as well. So I think that part's interesting. But Melissa and I just basically spent the next 40 minutes uh, just talking about how absurd I looked. Yeah, I was kind of just like creeped out. Yeah, it was a lot of just like her looking <laughs> intently at me. And me being like, what? Because I was like trying to just like listen normally but then it was really distracting because you looked like a woman yeah every time i would every time we would like get into a conversation i would kind of forget that i had the makeup on it would just turn back to her just being like you look weird <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough yeah. it was a tough one-on-one -on -one combo it to was be honest tough, yeah um so yeah i don't know maybe we'll release that in the future uh we might see uh if we end up going the patreon route where we have like some behind the scenes type stuff that'll obviously be a good fit there yeah so uh sorry to disappoint but you you got the picture yeah at least um and you can't screen screenshot that photo you you can't deny i fucking look good i pulled it off you did you did pull it off but it, it was <laughs> You look like Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> uh, shout out to Steezy9, his with a $5 super chat. He said, you look like Bell Woman from America Horror Story, the one with Lady Gaga, which is appropriate. Um, never saw it, but I'm sure she's beautiful as far as I can tell. Bell Woman, that's Berkey. Yep, whatever. Uh, <laughs> you guys have yet to get a nickname to stick, and I'm not sweating it. Uh, just Melissa and I today... So we are, we, we're, we got a big show ahead of us today, <laughs> <laughs> say the least. Um, and uh, as far as the rest of the week goes, Conrad will be back on Thursday, landed back, I don't know, before Monday. I don't know. He might just run off in a lope and we'll never see him again. <sighs> this kid, man. I'm living vicariously. I, Me too. I love it so yeah. much. He's having a blast. He's going to Bush Gardens tomorrow. I know. I've never been to Bush Gardens. The fuck is this? Man, to be 23. I've never been again. on an amusement park date. Right. I actually have. It's great. I can't it's a good do date. roller coasters. It makes my brain shake and my concussed brain, <laughs> my concussed brain gets headaches. Oh, I used man. to be able to, and then the. The event happened. I, the event? <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're still talking about the horse. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. yeah, you make it sound like it was... <laughs> the brain trauma yeah. happened and I can't do roller coasters anymore. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, I was terrified of roller coasters until I was probably in seventh grade. And ironically, the way I very first started riding them. So we have a, a local theme park in Pittsburgh called Kennywood. Uh, fantastic place. Has one of the oldest uh, wooden roller coasters. <laughs> In America, wow. a little FYI, the Sounds thunder. It's like yeah, the thunderbolt. Definitely seeking out the oldest <laughs> wooden roller coaster in the country. Definitely uh, something on my bucket list. It, I think they have the oldest and the fastest. So it actually may be the racers that's the oldest, uh, and that's two roller coasters that race against one another. 
And I think the Thunderbolt is actually the fastest wooden roller coaster. But anyway. I don't. Yeah, the wooden ones especially, I can't go on. Oh, they're so. Your brain's going to shake uh, I mean, all over when the I first got into riding roller coasters, they were horrifying. But like now they're so much fun because it's it's so old school. It's like click, 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 yeah. click, 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 click. It sounds like it's going to fall apart. Yeah. Like, that's part of the sweat. Thing. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Uh, you want to know that there's a 1% chance you might die. I grew up going to Six Flags in New Jersey, and we would go on King Ka. That one was fun because mm. that's fast. Little no fact, I actually that clip that Guapo pulled up. I actually filmed that. That that was. Uh, uh, that's not true, but <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> that that's actually not true. I did not film this. However, uh, I do have film footage of me riding the Thunderbolt on the Solve for Y platform. So um, I don't remember what vlog number it is, but if you go back Look how to- how rickety that thing Oh is. yeah, it's rickety as fuck. It's so much fun though. This is my favorite roller coaster of all time. My head would be shaking and I would come, yes, off, I would yes. come off the ride and throw up. Absolutely. my head would be so Absolutely. Um, whenever we were doing vlogs, so the, the Solve for Y Chronicles, our very first bit of YouTube content, uh, I did film an entire day at Kennywood. It was me, Lamana, and Michelle. Ironically, I thought it was gonna be like you alone. No, <laughs> what the fuck? No, it was actually pretty dope. It was uh, it was me, Lamana, and Michelle, and then I met my nephew and his girlfriend there, uh -huh. and uh, we were just kind of like paling around uh, the 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 park all day long, riding a bunch of stuff. And there's a part or a scene at the end where we're playing like uh, this baseball game where you have to knock down a pyramid of bottles, mm -hmm. like milk jugs, uh, old school, like 1950s milk jugs and um we're going through it and like lamana and i are failing at it for a while and then finally i win and this little kid comes up to me and goes yo man you vlogging <laughs> and i'm like yeah you want to get in he's like nah <laughs> yeah, we put it in obviously wow uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun but uh the irony of how i began riding roller coasters because i'm terrified of heights mm -hmm. and like the idea of going upside down made me squeamish was uh, every summer, our local town would have a Kennywood Day, and it was organized amongst the town and the uh, the the high school and everything else. Like the band would show up, and mm. it was this weird thing that they did with like local schools. So they would put on a parade and all this like fun stuff. But it was a big community event; and literally everybody went. Uh, so you would get a discount on a day pass, and it was very cheap. So every summer from like age ten on. This was like the thing to do until probably we were 17. I think we stopped going maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like prior to being able to drive, we go with our family and stuff like that. So in seventh grade, after having been to two Kennywood days where I was the one who just sat out all the fucking rides because I was terrified. Finally, uh, you know, we're in junior high at this point and there are some high school girls there. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we meet up with Danielle Butler and uh, a, a couple of her friends. Shout out to Danielle. Shout out to Danielle. <laughs> I immediately had a huge crush. She was two years older than me, so she was in ninth grade when we were in seventh. Uh -huh. And it was like her, Mary, or Mindy Lacino, and a couple other girls. And they they like hung out with our group. And she like twisted my arm to go on this roller coaster. I have to tell you. I was never so in love and so happy to be in a death-defying uh, event in my life. Mm -hmm. And from that day on, it was just like, I love Kennywood. I love roller coasters. And this is the dream. You this still love them today. I do. Yeah. Wow. Most things I've come I to find. I loved them. I mean, I loved any sort of thrill-seeking thing when I was younger. And now now I feel like my body has caught up to me a sure. bit in my old age. You got abused a little bit. I, I mean, I, in, I say that in jest, but I also really did put my body through the ringer. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. I'm concussed. I've had alcohol poisoning a bunch of times. Right. My organs are probably failing to You're some You're in your degree. healing phase. You know, so I... I I can't really party like I used to I, on the roller coasters. <laughs> like <laughs> that one was sad because I actually did really like roller coasters, but they just make my brain shake around. Theme too park much. dates are a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't been on one in many, many years, so I don't know if it still applies at this age. But mm -hmm. I know, like in my twenties, that was definitely like a good time. Yeah, I remember we went to Dorney Park when I was in seventh grade, and it was before like camera phone mm. so i had my point and shoot like digital camera and i was just recording myself like with straight face because i thought it was like funny. so hilarious because for us it was fucking disposable cameras wow. and we had to like sweat it out 
Like we would take all these pictures during Kennywood Day uh-huh. and we would have this anxiety of like, did they come out well? Yeah. And I can't wait to see them. And we'd have to wait like a month yeah. to get them back. Yeah, my friends got kicked out because they were like, they were the kids that were like in the photos that they take, like pulling up their shirts and like rubbing their nipples in the, <laughs> in the photo and stuff. Sure. So they got kicked off the trip. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, I think every disposable camera role that I got back from like the age of 17 on had uh, a dick or a tit yeah. on it. Yeah. Like someone steals an, un- an unidentified yeah. dick or tit. You're just like, who's, who's is that? Mm-hmm. I would love to know. Never, never find out. Nope. Ah, what a good trip down memory lane. (laughs) Uh, Very fitting, actually, considering the trip I'm actually taking later this afternoon is to go meet six of my best friends from high school. Uh, It's. Have you ever seen the movie um, Grown Ups with Adam Sandler, David Spade? That's what this trip is 100% going to be. Will we get some video footage? I'll do my best. Uh, I really want to get off the grid as much as humanly possible the next five days. Well, in alone, they have cameras. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) They can do it. You can do it. (laughs) Very fair. Um, But yeah, I, I, I mean, we even have like the same cast of characters as as the movie Grown Ups. Uh Like, I I just envision a lot of uh, a lot of glory days being relived Mm -hmm. a lot of attempting to do things that a younger version of yourself could have done uh you know like getting blacked out drunk right it's a little different when you get blacked out at 40 yeah i bet the hangovers are not wouldn't know but i gotta tell you uh even just the behavior while you're blacked out very different really yeah yeah i mean uh i noticed that that at 40 ish you know like i haven't seen these guys in a year or two so like let's call it somewhere in your late 30s mm-hmm. getting blacked out drunk turns a lot more emotional really than it, yeah i think like when you're blacked out in your 20s yeah. you just want to do you stupid just shit rage out and yeah crazy. like bash your head through a window do right. something like really yeah impulsive breaking beer bottles on your head yeah, yeah. now it's a little bit more like <laughs> I, I miss you guys man oh <laughs> that's how it is with like girls yeah maybe it goes the opposite and right. women in their 40s when they get blacked out are like raging yeah, yeah, yeah. bashing their heads into walls looking for the last guy at 2 a.m at yeah. the bar yeah actually yeah i think yeah. that's true i think you're right i think it actually does go yeah. the exact <laughs> reverse order because that's us at 22 right. for sure and then now you guys are the sentimental ones yeah and sadly i was sober throughout all of it right. so uh yeah. i was never taking anyone home at 2 a.m and now i have to suffer through all this blabbering uh-huh. <laughs> and tears and I it's know. Just like and you get, get your shit together you, sally you notice when you are around a bunch of people drinking and you get like gets to a point in the night when you see the lights go off behind their eyes oh yeah and then you're like okay it's probably time for me to go to bed <laughs> yes, i'm gonna yes. hear the same sentence about 15 more times the uh, <laughs> that actually might be the most intolerable thing about uh people who are like drinking excessively it's it's They're very eating. rarely the behavior or like them saying something out of line or whatever mm-hmm. it's like i can live with all of that yeah because you know i see what's going on here i can take it with a grain of salt it's the repetitiveness it's so repetitive. and their ex- expectation for me to be like an active listener. Yeah. And you're like, they expect you to react as if it's the first time you're hearing right. it because they think it is. Right. And like, but they've said it about 15 <laughs> times. And the second that you like zone out, they're so offended. It's like, come on, man. You've been it's running like, me through the how fucking are you ringer. How rare that I've zoned out? Like you're blacked out. Right. <laughs> but somehow you know that I'm not listening to the 15th yeah. time that you've said right. it. Right. You're just like really dialed in <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. The fact that, like you just cannot imagine that I just stopped caring at right. some point throughout this conversation. I know. It's that I've talked about this with my other friends like who don't drink. And it's like there is like a certain, it's like usually around 3 a.m. Yeah. And there's a certain tipping point then everyone just gets way too drunk to deal with and right that's yeah, when yeah it's time to turn it in <laughs> uh given that you have both perspectives would you say that there is a different persona for yourself whenever it comes to like drunk melissa versus sober? oh yeah i mean by a lot so uh let's take that one step further now like when you're when you're seeing somebody yeah um they obviously have to juggle that w- would you say that there is a certain way that drunk melissa needs to be handled or catered to (laughs) yeah i mean but i was like well it because i had different 
it depended. Like I had different modes when I was drinking. Whether if I was in an angry mode, there's mm -hmm. a different way you should handle that. If, right. if I was in like a, a horny mode, <laughs> there's a way to handle that. Sure. If I was in like a, a some are a little more intuitive you know, than others. Yeah. So there was different. You know, it was pick your and it was sort of like Russian roulette. They didn't know what they were right. going to get. Was I going to scream at them? Was I going to? get naked in public like you just don't know <laughs> okay you're a bit more of a wild card than i'm accustomed to dealing with uh, yeah no i'm not like i i think in the for the most part like there was uh sometimes i would try and get in fights in public or whatever yeah um yeah i think there is definitely a way to handle the drunk me versus the non-drunk me, but I would advise if anyone sees the drunk me to run <laughs> <laughs> because it's not going to end well for either of us. You're, you're just like a save gremlin yourself, who was fed after midnight. Save yourself because <laughs> sure. it's not going to it's not going to end well. Uh, we were having this conversation, or I was having this conversation. Uh, I don't want to out anyone, but. Um, and it was basically discussing like how when you really like somebody uh, that, you know, that that's still a version of them, but right. it's not going to be in alignment with the rational ver so, so, side of them. Yeah. And I was just kind of explaining when like, drunk. Yeah. yeah, I was kind of explaining like, you know, having dated a lot of we'll call it party girls. No, no, actually oh, no. quite the opposite, okay. but more so like uh, a little crazy. Okay, yeah. A little crazy. Sure. And that gets amplified when you're drinking. Yeah. You know, like the crazy hot scale, I've yeah. done pretty well <laughs> at finding girls on the yeah. exact line. Yes. And what drinking does is allow them to play hopscotch with that line. Yeah, I mean, I was actually discussing this, the hot crazy matrix thing because I'm like, well, it I understand what it's like. It's almost like you want to see how far you can sure. go, and I think the hotter how much, a girl how much, is, uh, leeway do you get right. based off your looks? Yeah, and hot, to be the hotter crazy. a girl is, the more he, he's likely to put up with her being crazy. Yeah. So that's sort of I think where that comes from because it's I think it's natural that we'll sort of push the boundaries of yeah, what, yeah. what will be allowed in our behavior, and then it's up to the guy to have his own boundaries, and that's sort of like. So what I was kind of explaining, uh, so this is the YouTube clip, not the best reference the point, no actually. Zone. <laughs> uh, this clip is actually very funny, but it's actually not the best reference. They ripped it off from How I Met Your Mother. And oh, that's right. Yeah. Barney does just a fantastic yeah. bit with this. Um, but what I was explaining uh, in this conversation is that you as the sober guy have a very different responsibility when you care about someone for sure than if you were a drinker yourself and it's kind of a privilege because what happens if you're just getting drunk alongside the girl is you just get to be equally toxic to one another yeah and then deal with the fallout somewhere yeah. else down the line right and it always comes mm -hmm. like the fallout will always. be there yeah <laughs> but it's pushed back right mm -hmm. as the sober guy you kind of get to mitigate the toxicity you will you become like a a babysitter yeah, to some degree but it's also like uh to the level of your choosing and i had to learn the hard way so it was nice to have the conversation of like look let me give you some of the life lessons that i've picked up dating hot crazy girls yeah and it's a when they drink uh their insecurities bubble to the surface very quickly yeah so you need to be able to very, very quickly because identify them and you're you're yes. putting you're putting yourself together every day. Right. You're not gonna let them see your. You're gonna let them see you break. <laughs> right. Like I'm not gonna let them see me crack. But then they, they have a drink and they're like, "You hate me." Right. Exactly. I so you're bottle you wine me. deep. <laughs> yes. I saw the way you looked at that waitress. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. So I was like, look, what, what you need to understand is that everybody's insecure in some capacity, and alcohol brings it out. Mm -hmm. And you, as the significant other. You are the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> so you it's existing. Yes. Is not correct. <laughs> like you even just breathing. Yeah. Is and then the it'll, trigger? And it'll bring up stuff that happened like months ago. A hundred percent. You know, I was thinking about that time. Like, <laughs> you liked that person's photo on Instagram and I was thinking about it and I bet you do that all the time. Right. So, <laughs> right. So it becomes this, it becomes this like understanding of, okay, uh, the more you get to know them, obviously, the more you'll be able to hone in on like what the exact insecurities are. And you'll mm -hmm. be able to mitigate it and prevent it ahead of time. But if you're not to that point yet yeah. and you're kind of finding out for the first time, yeah. which I've been in this 
I've been in front of this tractor trailer a lot and I haven't gotten out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you basically have to have like some protocols in place of as yeah. you're identifying it. Okay. What will ease this situation? Yeah. Right. So if you see so, somebody, so a lot of times food is good. Yes. Yeah. For a drunk girl. Anything that shows you care. Yeah. Anything that like demonstrates to them that they are in a secure place when they're around right. you, I think is a really good approach yeah. and it's hard because you're already your patients are worn thin well and you're you're like on the stoic side of things so i think that that That's could true. probably cause um a drunk girl to like push even harder for like, sure i'm gonna make him crack <laughs> <laughs> yes this this is for sure true because like uh drunk girls love pda yeah and stoic sober guys do not right so this is already going to be uh, a bit of a an issue to begin mm -hmm. with um, but yeah, it's like if you if you recognize that somebody feels like some sense of abandonment or some sense of uh, feeling less than or whatever, doing anything that demonstrates to them that you're there yeah. and that they're secure with you eases the tension immediately. For sure. And also drunk people have uh, like short attention spans. So yes. you can kind of distract them pretty easily and like just like, oh, let's not talk about that anymore. Which brings <laughs> me to my second point. The biggest mistake you can make mm. is trying to rationally talk it out. Oh, yeah. Don't do that because they're going to barely remember it. And it's going to be the most infuriating conversation. Them not remembering it? Least of your concerns. Yeah. The fight that ensues is one that you don't recommend on your uh, worst enemy. I would wake up from being drunk some days and like... I would just have a vivid memory of screaming at my significant other, but no clue what we were right. screaming about. So I would wake up and be like, um, hi, I remember screaming at you. Right. Is everything okay? Yes. And they're like, you like threatened to break up with me. Yeah. Like you always, the relationship's always in jeopardy when they're drunk. Uh huh. If you don't, if you don't follow these protocols, yeah. the relationship will always be in jeopardy. You as the sober person are feeling like you're at your wits end mm -hmm. and about to lose something that you care so desperately about. So you put all of your energy into that only to find out the next day. That it was all for yeah, naught. It was just a show. It was all a show. <laughs> it was a lot of just like things that are in that head space floating yeah, around. It's sort of like not a, passing like a through a filter to the brain and yeah. just sort of mixed it all together and it just spewed yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it just came out all at once. And so what ends up happening is the next day, if you fell victim to trying to rationally discuss this while drunk, uh -huh. uh, is a very flippant, huh? Well, it's so weird because I don't even care about that. Yeah, like, I, I don't care about it. S sorry, sorry about yeah. that. Like, you know, just, just a very casual, like, sorry. Meanwhile, like, you just had the worst experience I of know. your life and you're just like, sorry? I know. You're sorry? My, this happened when I was in I college. hate you. Like, my college boyfriend, um, he, he didn't drink that night, but I went out and, like, got blacked out with my friends from high school. And then I came back my dorm and they wouldn't let me in it was this whole thing and i started this whole scene and he was down there trying to like litigate for me but i was not doing him any favors and i was like they want to send me to the hospital like they don't know how many drugs i've done in my whole <laughs> life like they don't think i can handle my shit <laughs> like just making this whole scene and they had to call the police because i wouldn't get it in the ambulance sure, and then sure. the police took hours to come and he's just like stone sober like just dealing with all of this. And then the next day I'm like, I think I had a concussion cause I fell out of the Uber face first onto my <laughs> head. So I was like puking. I mean, I was hungover too, but I was also super dizzy and I had to sign for a new apartment lease. So I'm like puking on the subway Right. And, he, and he's just like, I can't deal with the, like, this is insane. Like yeah. what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> It was like, like, what do you mean? What? I mean, I, nothing. It doesn't seem like it was that bad. He's like, it was bad. You weren't <laughs> even. How do you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think that like, I, I think then there becomes like this massive disconnect where they can never understand what it's like mm -hmm. to be sober in that situation. Yeah. And you can never understand what it's like to be drunk. Right. And then sober the next day. Yeah. I mean, I know both. So sure. now if I do like. You have a very unique perspective. Yeah, because I know the extremes of both. But I, my friend, like my best friend from high school, he got sober when we were uh, like 15. Mm -hmm. And he, like I've seen him date several different train wrecks through, right. since then. Now he's with a really nice girl. But like the, it was just crazy watching him because he's very like stoic too. And he would just be sitting there while they're just like screaming at him. And he's like, yep. 
it's all right. It'll yeah. be okay. <laughs> and that's the last thing that uh, I basically advise that like you really have to find a, a, a centered self yeah. worth uh, uh, like with, with, within intrinsically, right? Not externally with her because the last thing about these type of, of women, um, well, I, I, I should say uh, this coincides, is on top of all the, the negative things that we just said, they're a blast yeah when drunk yeah so much fun they're so outgoing they're flirty they are so fast to yeah. demonstrate like how much they care and like mm -hmm. all these other things but don't flip them <laughs> that and also they have no boundary so yeah. you are going to be in a group scenario where they're just making out all over you <laughs> well that yes but also uh a lot of all those things that we just described uh -huh. the group will get to experience too so she'll be fun with the group she'll be flirting right. with the group and you really have to find a center where you're just like this is fine yeah this is okay yeah i don't That's care just how it's normal she's she's leaving with me there is no reason for me to overreact. Mm -hmm. And that is a very difficult thing for a young man who is like just experiencing this for maybe the first or second time yeah. to really understand. Right. I struggled, especially like being an argumentative person. Especially if you're not used to being around drunk people. Yeah. I mean, luckily for me, uh, that was something that was never a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I was always the DD. My friends would get front row hammered drunk when we would go out, like they were the most extreme absurd people on earth. And it's like, I had a lot of hot friends that were girls also. So I got to see it from the perspective of one in the group rather yeah. than like her significant other. And, uh, you know, full circle, like it just made me fully understand the entire dynamic at play where it was like, oh, well, when I was the guy in the group of friends, mm -hmm. I literally felt bad for her significant other. Yeah. And it's like, well, now when you're the significant other, you just know that like they have a little bit of empathy for you. Yeah. They know that you're, you're, she could be a little bit of a hot mess at times, right. but like she's an amazing person for whatever reason and everything else. Uh, so it, it was one of those things that was probably easier for me to navigate that aspect of it where it's like, well, I'm self-confident enough to know that like if there was any danger whatsoever of her just randomly making out with somebody else here or leaving, then it's done. Yeah. And I can easily walk away from yeah. that. Uh, the more difficult part was biting my tongue when the fights were being picked. I can't imagine that you had an easy time. Took a lot of relationships yeah. failing yeah. for me to realize like yeah. fighting back like, is she, not the she's way. She's being so illogical. I have to correct this. And it's like, yeah, she's blacked out. <laughs> she is going to be illogical. I mean, yeah. I, I've dealt with that from like d dating guys who drink as a sober person. Mm -hmm. And it's, they're not always so charming and fun. I would imagine with guys, it's it's two very prevalent things that you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's two totally different personality types, but it probably stems from the same place. It's just the way it comes out differently. One is the overly insecure, uh, like constantly blabbering and spewing, like, why are you even with me? I don't understand. Oh, like, God. Like oh that, my God. that type. I haven't been with that one. That one would scare the shit out of me. Though. That's good. Yeah. Uh, the other one would be the type that just goes like full bravado. Yes. Where it's just like chest puffing, wants to start fight. Are yes. you looking at my girl kind of thing? That's what I've dealt with. It seems yes. like it stems from the same root. It is. Uh, it's just a different yeah. like, you know, Yeah, or personality they're just type. a mess and they're, you know, falling and yeah. they're being, you know, they're puking and it's just like, okay. There aren't enough like funny drunks out there. No, no. You know, the type that just get, like, absolutely blacked out, and they are just a sheer joy. I find uh, Marley to be the funniest drunk I've ever been around. Bro. <laughs> I, I she actually is, love being around she her, and I don't like being around drunk people. so out of line. <laughs> it makes me laugh, like, piss my pants laughing when she drinks. She's, she's amazing. She's absolutely great. Like, I don't, and I really don't, and sh like, she'll even get like super drunk and it doesn't bother me at all. Like sure. there's, but there's, I do notice like with certain people, because also like I grew, I grew up around like the toxic type of drinking. So I, I think I have a, a bit of a radar for it. Mm -hmm. So I can tell sort of when someone might have a problem with drinking and that being around that person really like freaks me out Yeah, yeah. just from an unconscious level. Like yeah. I just feel unsafe, but around Marley, I'm just like, this, she is so funny. No, like, she's a blast, but like she almost more so than anybody else has made me feel very uncomfortable when she's drunk like she just has no I know. fucking filter especially if we're in public and there's like people around and she just will be doing the funniest shit like she just 
started growling at a random group of like 21 year old <laughs> tourists like uh, like growling like a dragon and yeah. they all started screaming yeah this 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 fits <laughs> yeah this definitely tracks for sure yeah she uh she's one of the funniest drunks i've been around um <laughs> that's a good place to end <laughs> uh so one bit of news that popped off today that i think is worth mentioning um ludwig released a youtube video today about how he was scammed over a hundred thousand dollars i was curious melissa sent it to the group decided to watch it first and foremost what a fantastic storyteller amazing just incredible yeah i mean that he, video flew by it was 20 minutes I and i like watched it brushing my teeth i know i was i was just like doing something else and i, I was like whoa that's like yeah really flew by just really really fantastic at storytelling i understand how he has the following that he has um i i think it's important to get the information out that the video portrayed which is basically that um the long and short of it is that he was scammed by the same person who scammed rampage which uh -huh. is grayson grayson don't even know his last name probably should um disney uh, something claims to be a voice actor for disney uh <laughs> like he's he when he in ludwig's video he says that grayson did a bit of a voice act for him and he did spongebob but he's not the voice of spongebob is he as far as i know no <laughs> right? and, and ludwig's like well that's a six out of ten but yeah. like i guess maybe <laughs> this is possible you just did a spongebob impression to be right like, yeah i think it was his way of proving that he's a voice actor in general oh, i then guess you could copy spongebob yeah. in a six out of ten way yeah. yeah but it seems seems weird yeah, uh weird. anyway long and short of it is basically like um you know it, it worked the way all scams work he built up some trust by uh, getting Ludwig to give him a small amount of money, he gave him a return on that small amount of mm -hmm. money, and then he got him they to give him- They just met at like a table game somewhere. Yeah, yeah. they were just gambling in Vegas, uh, and you know, Ludwig's not exactly sharp in the gambling community. Right, he mentioned that he had brought a lot of money with him. Yeah. <laughs> so it's maybe not what you want to do yeah. when you first meet someone gambling. Right, I'm a big star on YouTube, yeah. like, I you know, you might've heard of me. with me yeah. this time, I usually don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he was ripe for the picking, to say the least. Uh, Grayson then basically got him to send him uh, a small amount of money. He sent that money back, plus a yeah, return. Yeah, it sounded like he was going to stake him yeah, for gambling. for like gambling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then convinced him to send a very large amount of money, 50000 in crypto, for a big sports bet on the French Open. And mm -hmm. now apparently, uh, as the story goes, Grayson made this sports bet on the French Open, won it for a large sum, like 150K, mm -hmm. um, didn't pay Ludwig. And apparently Ludwig found out that he had been in debt uh, with somebody else and used the money to fund his debt. Yeah. So And he saw Rampage's tweet. Correct, yeah. And was like, wait, he scammed someone out of $1,000? He right. owes me 100K. Like 100 and something, yeah. <laughs> So, um, long story short, basically, Ludwig concluded that Grayson's probably a problem gambler. Mm -hmm. uh, they agreed on a retribution, sort of, I guess, where uh, Grayson would self-ban from all casinos in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, Ludwig said he has enough information to go forward to the FBI and probably get Grayson uh, arrested and potentially, um, you know, see some time out of this. Mm -hmm. I actually reached out and dm ludwig heavily encouraging him to follow that pursuit uh i think it's rare in this community that somebody who scams has enough um evidence. information or evidence against them yeah where we can actually pursue charges uh whether it's civil or or um uh criminal, criminal i don't care mm -hmm. right like i would just like to see some precedent set uh against scammers like this and you know ludwig's uh He's a young, bleeding heart kind of guy where he's like, oh, this guy's 23. He made some mistakes. Yeah. 50,000 is not going to break me. Like, right. I'm a wealthy YouTuber kind of thing. It's like, I get it. But like real world uh, actual applications here, $50,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. And if he was willing to scam you for that much. He's scamming other people. I he, mean, he's already he's a, scammed other people. Yeah. So. and it, Like, it doesn't get smaller from there. Right. It only gets larger. Facts, if you can get yeah. away with a six-figure scam, you're going to look for, find a way to get away with a seven-figure scam. Yeah. Uh, so I do think that like there's some onus on Ludwig to maybe move forward and press charges. I, I really do, do hope that he reconsiders here. Um, you know, this guy's self-banning and cleaning his well, he life said up. He's, he's in touch with other people that like other people, I'm sure more people are reaching out to him about mm -hmm. getting scammed by this guy. He might see that there's like enough people like, maybe. Okay, this 
as time passes though it becomes harder to to pursue charges yeah uh so i, I think that like it'd be good to act swiftly and act diligently yeah um but i understand where he's coming from uh i personally don't agree with his choice but i get it uh, I think it's very, very fucking generous of him. Yeah. Like, he's not getting his money back, and he's letting this guy keep his freedom. That's that's pretty fucking generous. Right. So, you know. Also, it, like, if, him, if he's self-banning from casinos, I mean, he's going to find other ways to scratch his itch. Oh, for sure. And he'll scam people to for sure. do that. You don't so. need a casino to fucking gamble. Right. That's very like clear he's clearly dealing with like instagram bookies and stuff yeah so <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i mean it's very high probability that this guy's floating around in some of the clubs uh in poker right. i'm sure that he's doing a lot of online sports betting and not paying yeah uh i don't think this is the last that we've heard of grayson no put it that way <laughs> grayson grayson when will you learn tisk tisk young tisk, man tisk grayson get and your shit together apparently the bruises were fake sure someone saw him yeah. allegedly the next that day, day with yeah. that i mean it looks like lipstick grayson you got to get a bruise kit <laughs> i mean have you seen the tinder swindler have you seen any of these documentaries they use bruise kits my enemies they're yeah, after you gotta, me you gotta get step up your game because if you're gonna do this do it right we don't want to see half-assed lipstick on your forehead. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Who's punching you in the middle of your forehead? That was who punches in the middle of a forehead. That was really the telltale sign, wasn't it? Yes. And second of all, that's lipstick. It's shiny. Yeah. And it's glossy. It's the color of berry. I hear you. Got to use a bruise kit, Grayson. I do hear you. Um, let's get into the shits a little bit. Uh, I was going to talk a little more poker, but we can save it. We need we need some meat on the bone for the rest of the week. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Twitter, because why Twitter not? Twitter drama. Uh, well, before we get into the drama, I want to talk about uh, a poll that I put out. I guess this was last Friday. I got a lot of likes on my response to that. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> like, you didn't fucking even respond. <laughs> I know. I like literally did not even qualify as a response. No, yeah. Like you, you broke every rule. I know. And every single rule I broke. And out. honestly, actually, let's talk about that because yeah. this is this is very <laughs> indicative. Beverages. This, this is very indicative, in my opinion, as to why everybody who answered this fucking poll was a goddamn liar. Uh huh. Okay, so you replied with. <laughs> let, let me see if I can find your your actual reply. My reply was something along the line. Of Diet Coke. <laughs> it was Diet Coke, Outback Prime Rib. Um, some some sort of mayo. Guapo, can you scroll down or is that a screenshot? Okay. Uh, yeah, it was Japanese mayo, Outback Prime Rib, Diet Coke, Oatly, and a Starbucks venti ice blonde oat milk latte. Yeah, you put Oatly in there and then the <laughs> Starbucks, which contains Oatly yeah. after the well, fact. Well, it's a different, you know. Sure, yeah, drink. yeah. Yeah, so uh, of the things that you said, I think none of them actually <laughs> qualify. Maybe the prime rib, but that has ingredients on it. Well, yes, yes. Uh, prime rib would probably be fine. Be Outback prime rib, probably Outback. not. Why? Because it, it's it's almost certain to be uh, cooked in a manner that doesn't yeah that doesn't allow it to be okay. one ingredient any longer. Uh, so to catch everybody up, what the poll was, were, uh, or the question that was presented, is if you were offered life-changing money uh, for you to consume only five whole foods, i.e. each food had a single ingredient, for an entire year, do you feel like you would thrive, survive, or fail? Um, and as you can see, thrive overwhelmingly won. Now... Uh, after the fact, a lot of the conversation I was having with people like Ike and a few others was that, uh, and maybe I should just ask you before I tell you what the conversation was, what's your interpretation of thrive in this scenario? Um, like able to still sort of like do your life and feel happy and good, maybe even better than before. Like do all of the regular things that you do and during that year, you're yeah, saying, and it's right? not really like it's not taking away from your life. Like you're you're thriving. You're yes, doing, you're I wholeheartedly than, agree with you. More than expected, right? I wholeheartedly agree with you. That's what I had in mind whenever I said thrive. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, it doesn't interrupt your day to day. Yeah. It actually amplifies and betters your right. day to day. And uh, in a general sense, like it's it's better than tolerable. Yeah. Right. Like I would say tolerable would be like the bare minimum qualification right. for beginning to thrive. Right. 
Yeah, and it when it comes like removes barriers to thriving that you had before. Yes, correct. When when you say survive, the idea is that like of course you'll succeed, but it's going to be a painful year. Yeah. Right. And to me, like I thought that was abundantly clear. Yeah. Uh, and what everybody in the thread, well, not everybody, but like what Ike and a few others in the thread were saying is that when you say life-changing money, uh, that is enough motivation to where people will trick their brain mm -hmm. into, um, basically believing that they can thrive throughout this process. And he gave a few examples of saying like, well, if you offer me life-changing money, I would hire a chef. I would, I would basically do a bunch of things to make the day-to-day -day, uh, regiment easier. Yeah. And my rebuttal to that is like, well, I didn't think that the difficulty here was going to be inconvenienced by any stretch, right? Like, it's only five foods. Yeah. How inconvenient could it be? Yeah. The, the difficulty is the mundane nature of it, the fact that you're restricted, mm -hmm. right? Like, you, you have barriers and boundaries now. You can't just eat that thing you're craving. Right. Otherwise, you lose. Yeah. And there's no way to hack that. There's absolutely no hack that exists. There's no amount of money that exists that can make you stop wanting an item that isn't on the list, mm -hmm. that can make you somehow uh, not bored with eating the same five foods over and over and over again. Right. Uh, and we basically kind of landed on an agreement that we're defining thrive differently. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't... And, and you know what? To be fair, given the poll results i think more people think like him than me yeah because how on earth do 44 percent of people almost 6500 people voted this yeah. is this is three thousand plus people i feel like people just sort of click buttons on holes and before they think yeah maybe I, it. yeah it's obviously not perfectly scientific because like they'll just sort of be like oh yeah i'd crush that thrive and then they like don't think about it well what i really wanted to come of this was bets i i would oh. love well, yeah. i would no fucking one, clean up you, yeah i know but that that's like your dream you have a war on food so it's <laughs> well it's not a war on food uh and honestly like so i ran a follow-up poll uh basically saying like you know if if you were uh to qualify do you believe that your strategy when it comes to food is eating to live living to eat or um uh, you craving variety. Uh, so like basically like trying to find the health. No, I didn't, I didn't word it that way because I think that would obviously make variety the, the easy choice. Yeah. Like if you make it sound like you get to both eat healthy and, uh, consume whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, however I worded it, basically, um, it made the choices feel relatively equal. Eat to live was a landslide. Yeah. I feel like I, uh, actually I actually have noticed this lately since I'm trying to like be in a calorie calorie surplus mm -hmm. is I think I do generally eat to live because I don't really like eating that much. Like I think I I Well, I have to tell you, this really contradicts your stance of I'm in a war versus food. I know, but it's it's weird, but I, I it's like I I sort of now that I'm like seeing it as like a a part of a goal because mm -hmm. I want to like, uh, I have a certain like body goal and everything. I want to like gain more. Now it's, I'm seeing it more as like a chore than sure. before where it was just like, oh, this is like, this tastes good, this tastes good. But now it's like, I have to eat. So now I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Uh, I, let me stick a pin in that for one second. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I found the poll. So, I wrote function, pleasure, or convenience. And they actually came back relatively close. 34% was eat to live. So it's function, parentheses, eat to live. Yeah. Uh, pleasure was 31% live to eat. And convenience, quick and easy, was 27%. So I think uh, what you're speaking to is what I've always been arguing. And, yeah. and not, the, not the chore part. Right. Um, but more so, like, if we interchange this with a million other things that we do daily to survive i don't think any of us would ever say like oh my god yeah i live to do that thing like if we said like i live to sleep yes or brush your teeth yeah. or shower yeah like who derives so much pleasure from these things and that's all i know you say it's a war against food but it's <laughs> not it's a war against romanticizing food yeah right because in my mind it's not healthy the people who say like i love 
food. Mm -hmm. I love to eat. <laughs> yeah. I love to cook. Now, cooking, I think, is a little bit different. Yeah. Because I do think that there's... It's a skill and an art. It's a, a science. It's yeah. an art. It's, it's, it's a craft mm -hmm. in and of itself. Uh, and it's not done necessarily with the idea of abundance and consumption. Yeah. Right? But when people, like, frame it so romantically as though like food is the driver in their life yeah it's very difficult and challenging for me uh as somebody who sees us as these meat rockets yeah. on this earth that are built to do certain tasks and have the luxury of being able to think mm -hmm. uh consciously and and operate in a way that is bigger than everything else on this planet it's very challenging for me to think that we're reduced to a consumption model yeah no, I understand that. I, and I am, I am understanding that actually more now that I'm like working out more because I just now it's more, it is more fuel. Like I know if I eat like shit, my workout will suck the next day. Yeah. Like I know if I don't eat enough, like that's sort of a wasted workout because it's not going anywhere. So right. it's like a weird thing now that I'm seeing it more as like a function rather than a pleasure. I mean, having lived with you this, this long, the irony to me is that I would have never qualified you as uh, live to eat no right but like you fought so hard for that because i think from my vantage point uh there was this romantic idea yeah because i like to cook sure sure so i i see the beauty in food and everything but i do think that my mindset is different from people who would live to eat because and i've never really like food like even when i was little like i ate like a, a bird my parents would have to like section off food that i had to finish because yeah. i wanted to go and do other stuff like yeah, my yeah. brain just doesn't like to sit still and eat for that long right so yeah no i think i think the live to eat is definitely way more like extreme than my perception of yes it. like, like my version people who of qualify themselves as foodies not like normal people right people eat. who qualify themselves as foodies it, it doesn't just end at they don't want any restrictions on their diet it goes a step further where uh they're actually in pursuit of decadence of yeah. variety of abundance of overconsumption, right? right and like those are all things that when it comes to health and wellness and uh you know food as we view well, it food starts to control them yes and then they have to fight against it right sort of and like that's all of the things that i'm vehemently against yeah like i think that's where as uh consumerism gets more and more profound in this country we begin to fail day over day because the government is so in bed with large food yeah. conglomerates the corn industry yeah and they profit from us being addicted to consuming right whether it's you know con content or news or food or whatever it is in in, ex in excess yeah yeah, and, you know, uh, it's difficult not to, to parallel this to, like, a bit of the obesity epidemic, mm -hmm. um, and that will carry us into another conversation. But before we segue, uh, I do want to point out that, like, with almost half of the people answering this poll saying that they would thrive, uh, and, you know, the, the joke of me being in a war versus food and I only eat a couple <laughs> yeah. things anyway, I probably eat this way 90% of my life, mm -hmm. like, uh, at least in recent years uh, and moving forward, I don't see it changing anytime soon where I consume under 10 ingredients for sure. Mm -hmm. Probably 90% of my meals and yeah. I cheat what it's I would like qualify as cheese, eggs and meat. Yeah. I mean, largely yeah. uh, beans and oats and, yeah. you know, but basically like I'm choosing only whole foods mm -hmm. and there isn't a lot of variety and there's been a lot of arguments of well humans need to eat uh, variety in order to say how it's like okay well that was true uh when we didn't know anything about the foods and we yeah. were discovering but we can obviously optimize like there's nothing about it, it's not like deriving nutrients from a solo source right if those nutrients are complete yeah. make any fucking difference than if it came from a different source with the same nutrient panel yeah. i right? also think your body will kind of tell you what Yes, this is very eat. true. Like, it's sort of like, oh, I'm craving something fatty. Like, I'm low on fat. Right. You know, and then just like finding exactly. a source of that that is within. What yeah. And, and when you're picking out your five foods here, it's very critical that you do make sure you cover all your bases. But it can certainly be done, especially mm -hmm. like we were, I, I was giving the, the leeway of if you pick beef, you get to eat the cow nose to tail. Right. It's like, okay, well, organ meat, bones, marrow, all that stuff. You're going to, you're going to get the full scope of what you need to accomplish is simply from this source and yeah. now you can get your fiber and 
vitamins from from elsewhere or whatever um but the the major point that i want to make here is uh a i think variety is massively over overrated and like that's where you could frame the whole war on food mm-hmm. but b i eat like this probably 90 percent of the time and the 10 percent i don't i gorge on shit it's just yeah, like no, cookies ice do. cream whatever yeah. <laughs> And uh, w- with me saying that, if I'm saying that like maybe one in 30 days uh, or maybe even less frequently than that, one in 60 days, uh-huh. I just absolutely destroy myself on trash. Yeah. I would, I would have answered this poll survive. And I think that I actually would fail. Even with life changing money on the line, I would probably fail somewhere around 20%. Mm. I think it's that hard. Yeah. I think it's, I think it is too. I mean, at a certain point, you just, like, don't want to eat the same shit over and over. I think if we, if we took 6,500 people, uh, even if it's the exact 6,500 we answered, and we ran this experiment for one year, mm. I think it's, like, a 10% success rate. Yeah. There was, like, a couple months when I was, like, super broke when I was working in retail, and I think I ate rice and beans, like, every day. for, And I, by the end, like, I couldn't eat rice for, like, a year. I was like, I can't <laughs> I even never get that way. rice. Like, it's just like, oh, I don't want to eat this anymore. And the, I would start the putting only random two shit things, in it. There, there's only two foods that I actually have to cycle out and, and work back in. So I just usually try to do them off of one another. It's eggs and chicken. Yeah. Something about eggs and chicken, uh, it, they become very unappetizing to me if i consume them every single day for mm. like a super long duration yeah nothing else is that way i feel that way with eggs i can rotate though like i'll rotate beef chicken and shrimp basically yeah yeah yeah. Uh, i think the thing with eggs and chicken is the prep uh the way they're both prepared like chicken to me working with chicken is disgusting yeah it's gross it feels it, it feels always like contaminated yeah i know uh and and with eggs it's like uh i can actually go a lot longer on eggs than i can with chicken because i can use it as in addition to Mm -hmm. so i can like if i'm eating beans and rice i can eat beans eggs and rice yeah Uh, and it goes really well i can pair it with a carb i can can also cook them different ways yeah there's a lot of versatility to eggs uh Mm -hmm. but yeah with raw chicken like just having to deal with it it's it's so i know one time i was watching how it's made and the chicken episode came on while okay. I was eating KFC and I like almost like didn't eat chicken for like months because it was, it just grossed me out so much. Like just like, I was like, ew, I'm eating that right now. What, it wasn't the one with like the McDonald's chicken nuggets. No, where... it was like, just like the chicken. Okay. The Have you ever and... seen like the pink slime one? Yeah. I've seen that. That's enough to make, I honestly, God don't know that I've eaten fast food since. Yeah. That was 15 gross, years but ago. I'll, maybe. I'll also eat a chicken nugget. I mean, chicken nuggets are fucking good. good. I like, really like. The, I'm weird though. Like, I I get like two filet o fish. I love filet o fish. So good. That was all I ate from McDonald's yeah. for like from the time I was four until yeah. the time I was like They're fifteen. So good. Yeah. I I I mean, I grew up liking fish a lot though. Yeah. Uh, I never liked burgers. Burgers were like a chore. Fast food burgers are gross too. Like they're the grossest. Wendy's were good, but it was because of the bun. When well, the meat is okay at Wendy's. It's okay. Is it it's, it's Five Guys level. Yeah, Five Guys is pretty bad. I get diarrhea I, every time I eat Five Guys. <laughs> I thought it was just the milkshake, so I didn't get a milkshake last sure, time, and yeah. it was not just the milkshake. Like, yeah, I yeah. don't know what it is, because the grease runs right through me. Um, yeah, I mean, the grease, the whatever you want to call it. Like, it's not high quality <laughs> yeah, food, it's to not, say the it's least. Not. My stomach is not happy after I do that. And yeah. it's, a, it's a lot at once. It's really heavy. Well, the other thing is, like, I assume you always get the fries, right? Like, yeah. That's the only reason to even go to Five yeah. Guys. I mean, that's a lot of fucking peanut oil. It is. That you're consuming. And I'm not used to eating it's peanut harsh. oil. It's harsh. Yeah. It, it's so. definitely harsh. It's very inflammatory too. So oh, it's like. Peanut oil is? Uh, peanuts in general are. So um, a lot of legumes tend to have high inflammatory okay, products. that makes sense. Or, that's why um, I would get diarrhea. Yeah. But peanuts are like the worst. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and nutritionally, they're not all that great either. Yeah. They're, they're high in fats and a little bit of protein. But like, you know, they come with a lot of net negatives. I, I, I like to lean on black beans a little bit more. When it comes to like legumes, they mm. have a better uh, or like a more complex nutritional profile. Beans, I don't like beans. They oh, when beans. you bite into it, it's like it's hard on the outside, but the inside is like a carpet. Oh, I love it. It's like fuzzy on the inside. It's not fuzzy. Yeah, it's like mush, it's mushy. mushy and fuzzy. Yeah. it feels like I'm eating a piece. No, of it's carpet. like overnight oats. No, it's not. It's it. It has a bit of a grain to it, so it feels like carpet. Like it's, it's like <laughs> no one else on <laughs> earth is is making some sort of analogy between beans and eating carpet. 
<laughs> not in the sexual way and not in the literal way either. It's, it's like, way closer to the sexual. On the outside and then you bite into it and it, you've just taken a chunk out it's of It's so much closer to eating carpet in the sexual capacity. <laughs> maybe. In, maybe. In the literal. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be a real tough segue now. Uh, so the real tweet that I guess... It's so funny. I put that poll out on Friday. I was like, fuck, man, this got so much traction. We are going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about like alone during all this and everything else. It's going to be great. And by Tuesday, I just retweeted a girl who like spent three years getting in shape and all of a sudden the internet broke. Holy shit. It's so weird. And with such an, it's like, it's such an innocent video. It's just a nice heartwarming story. So I want to, I want to pick this apart, like kind of frame by frame a little bit. What happened was uh, she got engaged and I believe she actually got married while she was, uh, what overweight. she would qualify as overweight. Like I, I'm not here to judge whatever you I want. Mean, medically. Yeah. yeah uh, whatever. I, I don't give a shit. Yeah, she looked whatever. fine before She's she looks fine. great now. Um, but the whole point is, is that she had made a decision uh, that that her husband proposing to her yeah. was a trigger to her to get her shit together, uh -huh. right? She had decided that her I can being, understand that. Yeah, of course. Look, we are all going to run into a million situations in our lives yeah. where something happens and we have a wake-up call. Yeah, well, it's like you're starting a family. It's like, do I want to, what kind of mom do I want to be? What kind of wife do I want to be? Or life, life comes in phases. Mm -hmm. What It could be turning 40. It could be... Uh, wanting to do better for a significant other. Mm -hmm. By the way, that end product is Amazing. unheard of. I've seen so many crazy transformations like on social media and stuff. Um, yeah. I'm, it's nice. Late, it used to be like not as popular for women to be strong and muscular and now yeah. it's like in and i'm i'm here for it. Me too. God, it's me sick too. Because when i was when i started lifting when i was like 16, it was not normal yeah. for like women to have muscle. And I was kind of weird for that. Like it was, everyone was wanted the skinny. They wanted the, the, what's it called? Hip, the thigh gap. Everyone, oh, yeah. you know, they wanted to be so out real on that thin with big boobs and blonde hair. That was like the standard when I yeah, was yeah. in high school. Yeah. And I was doing like CrossFit and, you know, getting, drinking two scoops of protein a day and just <laughs> getting jacked. Shitting yourself. Yeah, just shitting and, you know having protein farts all day and then then i got like you know i kind of distanced myself from it but now i'm getting back into it and i'm seeing all of these young like 20 year olds and they're just like jacked and yes it's cool it's, it's cool. great because what was once probably the most negative thing that existed uh within internet culture mm -hmm. has heavily shifted and in, in byproducts, it's because there are people out there shouting like standards need to change. But, you know, that model chic look that you were talking about was developed pre-internet. Yeah. Largely through print Kate magazine. Moss and, yeah. You know. And what the internet's actually done is turned that into a meme. Yeah. Have you ever seen like the, the meme of uh, like a girl who does CrossFit? It's like her ass versus Mc right. Victoria's Secret's yeah. ass. Yeah. It's remarkable. Like, we've come so far. I think the Kardashians actually helped that a bit, too. Yeah. I mean, they, I don't know that they really got it the right way, but... Well, yeah. I mean, they sort of led to more of the cosmetic surgery version of right, it. But right, they right. did uh, make it so that a big butt was desirable. Yeah, that was I, I not think that's a thing. true. It used to be, your butt looks big, that was an insult. I mean, speak for yourself. I grew up in a very well, Italian okay. area. <laughs> well, yeah, it used to be an <laughs> we insult. We were all about curves. I grew up around a bunch of, you know crunchy white women. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> um, but I, I guess, uh, there, there are so many points that I want to touch on, but I, I want to try to go in chronological order. So first of all, let's, let's, uh, take apart the video a little bit. What I saw when I watched this was a woman who basically hit her breaking point uh -huh. and something triggered that. Yeah. And that's great. I, I, I think that like, I don't know the meaning of life and I don't know what the fuck we're on this earth for, but as far as I can tell, if I have no other purpose in this existence uh, other than making myself a better version of myself today than I was yesterday, mm -hmm. that's seemingly good enough. Yeah. Like that will yield some sort of wider, wider spread benefit Butterfly to all, effect. right? And the fact that like something triggered that in this woman, I think is commendable. The fact that it was getting engaged and there was a wedding 
uh, around it. Mm -hmm. I understand that there's a certain stigma to that and like the whole idea of like doing it for a fad diets. Yes, that you're doing it for someone else that you need to crash diet right. in order to get to a certain oh, weight and right. then blow back up and yada yada. Yeah. I get that whole culture exists and the stigma exists. That's not what this video yeah, I is mean, You though. don't get to look like the way she did in her after without making a lifestyle change. Right. The most important thing that I think was overlooked was A, it seems as though she got married prior to the change. Yeah. So this wasn't about that. Right. B, she put for half of the video, 1,095 days yeah. was the commitment. And then the number of minutes and hours or whatever, it's like, I don't, I don't know what that breaks down to, but 1,095 days. Now you may gloss over that number and think like, no big deal. Mm -hmm. That is over three years. Yeah. This is a lot of goddamn time yeah. and energy. And this is not about dieting. This is not about operating a caloric deficit. This isn't about finding some crash diet mm -hmm. or the master cleanse. Right. Or some other bullshitty thing that we all can collectively agree on is absolutely harmful yeah. and useless to society as a whole. Right. What this is about is a process. It's about finding a process that makes you better today than mm -hmm. you were yesterday and committing to that process from now until the end of time. Yeah. And she does that and she demonstrates it so tremendously well throughout the video. The exercising, the tough days, everything else. And the follow-up to this that wasn't obvious in the video, but her husband was also tremendously overweight. Mm -hmm. He did it with her. Yeah. He's now shredded. Like, how the fuck are we not applauding this? What is controversial here? Apparently it leads to suicide. That that specific video. Wild. <laughs> wild to jump. me. I mean just wild to me. So I uh, I mean, obviously like this woman put this on TikTok, she hashtagged it weight loss, like yeah. all the things, and she has a, a business off of it. Right. Yeah. So like if you go to her website, she's a trainer. She's a trainer. Uh she does like wedding planning, like whatever. But like are we really that upset that she is turning a very well-formulated, long-standing process into a commodity? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't under, like, I've never dealt, I've never really dealt with, like, eating disorder stuff, but I know a lot of people, like, close to me who have. I don't think that this is the video. No. The type of video that's, like, leading to them doing something drastic. Well, uh, well, maybe it I is. Mean, it I, I mean, we don't know. Don't, we can't, can't speak for that. Yeah, but right. like. But to your point, I, this I, isn't what's creating the societal yeah, standard. It's, it's bothered. You know why it's bothersome? It's because, <clears throat> and whatever, no shot to Bonimo. I don't know. I don't know him. Whatever. I don't really care. But it's just annoying because it's like women have to deal with these like beauty standards and stuff. And like you can't even like. Don't stop speaking for us. Yeah. Just stop. Because every time I see him going off on Twitter, mouthing off, you're speaking for women. And it's like, you don't know what it's like to live under beauty standards that are constantly changing and telling you your body is wrong and all this and that. You cannot possibly pinpoint it to a specific fitness video that's actually probably more likely to motivate somebody and say that that's causing suicides among women or whatever it is. It's like, that's so fucking ridiculous. And like, don't do that. You yeah. know, just like shut up, probably. Yeah, I, I have, I mean, you know, since we started this podcast, uh, I've, been, I've been kind of dragged into uh, a subsection of this community that I don't know if I was previously ignoring. I would say probably I was largely previously ignoring because like, Bonomo and Marley had that huge thing mm -hmm. uh, over um, Marley making a joke about like uh, sleeping with someone for a steak or whatever. Yeah. And he's saying like, you know, it's punching down and yada, yada, yada. And at the time I was dating Marley and it didn't trigger me at all. I right. just didn't care. Right. So I think largely I just let that side go heavily ignored. Yeah. Thinking like, you know what? Really intelligent people. Uh, I don't agree with the take. It's overly sensitive to me, mm -hmm. but also doesn't really matter. Uh, I, like, I just don't care. It's yeah. not something I would speak up about. But since we started the podcast and we have this platform now, uh, I've been kind of pulled into this uh, 
subculture a little uh, bit more. Outreach culture. Yes, yes. And what I find is that it is a lot of well-to-do people who are highly intellectual, are gifted all of the, the, the benefits of life, mm-hmm. be it where they're from, uh, you know, the, their, their prosperity in life, their intelligence, whatever the case may be. They literally have all of the fringe benefits. And they're always advocating for people who didn't ask for it. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah. It's always finding outrage in something from their peers. For someone else. For someone else, uh, from their peers that look similar to them, live a similar lifestyle to them, Mm -hmm. agree on major political points with them. Yeah. And uh, you know, but aren't advocating or or being outraged on behalf of somebody else the way that they are. Yeah. And I don't understand it. I do understand wanting to platform people who don't have a platform that deserve it. Uh-huh. I do understand wanting to deplatform people who are very destructive in nature. Right. Right. I don't understand getting in the weeds of, uh, you know, basically one standard devio- deviation over from what you represent. Right. It just doesn't make any I mean, sense to me. It just seems like a waste of thought power and energy and it's like you're clearly a bright person you're smart you're capable why are you wasting your energy making points that are absolutely nonsense when i see that group (laughs) coming for live brie i know that like we've come off the hinges yeah it's just like come on man she is our brightest shining star yeah that this community has to represent and now all of a sudden we're dragging her because you've decided that effective altruism is capitalism at its worst and like all of these issues that are being taken, it's just like, God damn it. We have so many big things right. to concern ourselves with. Yeah. How on earth are we landing here? I don't know. It's like the most, it'll, it'll be like the most minute, like little thing. And I really just think, I mean, this is sort of, I went, I, this is part of the reason I dropped out of college because this outrage culture I went to college like when that when the 2016 election yeah I was it was when was I yeah it was, that was it was during the 2016 election and that after that point there was so much of that type of thing going on that I just was like this is so what are we doing here like everyone was constantly getting outraged for each other it was all this weird like talking in circles discussions in our classes and basically like all of the classes just becoming a huge echo chamber of the same outrage over and over i think i think you're nailing a big point here that's that's very key and it's the outrage itself it's not the conversation right because what comes with the outrage is the assertiveness that they're right and you're wrong yeah and the the they're the, not open to hearing the other correct side like ever. if we're being matter of fact about it it's like well we're all just human living on some sort of like None gradient of scale know. right <laughs> exactly and that was kind of what i posed to bonomo as, as a response where uh you know he was basically emphatically continually drawing the conclusion mm-hmm. that videos such as this are causal in suicide yeah and I just kept saying, like, please Correlation is stop not doing that. Right. Like, stop saying that there's a causal effect to creating a motivational video and people killing themselves. Yeah. And I basically pointed out that, like, what you're doing is being distracted by uh, a shiny object when the root cause is not being addressed. People have killed themselves in societies since the dawn of time. Forever. Suicide is never... It's not a novel thing. Mm-mm. It didn't just begin. Okay? So... If uh, I basically posed the thought experiment and said, like, if you had your way and we could rid the world of any sort of societal standards mm-hmm. and pressure when it comes to physical appearance, do you think that suicide would A, drop and B, stay that sustainable low rate throughout the rest of history? Right. And the answer to A, you know, I think we could all agree would be yes, it would, it would for sure drop. But the answer to B, uh, I actually, it might have been it might not have been Bonomo that, that answered this. It might have been Tom. But either way, uh, the the implication was basically saying like, I believe, I think B 
would say stay sustainably lower yeah and my counter argument is like i don't think it will because right. you're not addressing the the root cause which is mental health yeah by eliminating these triggers people didn't get healthier in the no, brain they're gonna be triggered by something else exactly exactly and i'm not i'm not a clinical psychologist i don't know anything when it comes to uh, uh the, these big deep human aspects that we are just as a society beginning to study and uh, and discover when it comes yeah. to like the human brain psychology mental health uh even physical health right mm -hmm. nutrition is such a young science right now so i'm not claiming to be an expert in any of this mm -hmm. but i have a passion for it and i i try to read as much as i can on both sides and i even understand fully yeah where this camp is coming from yeah with the side of like women are under societal pressure i mean i understand that's the thing that bothers me though is that i do understand it but he's pointing in my opinion at the wrong thing like Correct. i think that um there's a lot of you know filtering and body modifying that goes on on social media and you see you know these teenagers and they're looking like they're like 25 year old yep. models because of the way they're editing their photos and and you know he, a young girl seeing that repeatedly and repeatedly i think is much more damaging than an actual you know somebody motivated trying to motivate other people to get fit like right. and healthy like that's completely different and i just feel like it's attacking like you're that the issue that you're talking about is for sure real but like point that anger at at other things that are actually much more damaging than potentially helpful this comes back to the outrage too because again as i said with the outrage comes the assertion that they are the authority mm -hmm. and that you don't really have a leg to stand on right. but what's abundantly clear to me in this argument and uh ancillary arguments that i've seen cast throughout poker twitter is a lot of people claiming or making claims uh that diet and nutrition and fitness are are uh scams and that you're born with your genetics and that's just like oh, the way it goes on. i swear to god th this is this is very commonplace Who's saying that i don't want to mention names no, because i don't want to it's like people in poker saying this uh yeah but it's it's the it's the people you would suspect right right it's everybody that has us blocked yeah um but the the point i'm trying to get at is they're conflating one very niche thing with the entire spectrum of those industries so the niche thing that is correct is that People who diet tend to relapse and regain all or most, if not all of the weight, okay? That is not the same though as, as nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle changes right. being a scam. Right. And anybody with any knowledge in this arena understands that. Yeah. There is a huge difference. Like when I say diet, I don't mean that for the next X amount of days, like, I'm going to consume Y. Yeah, I mean, people also, it, diet doesn't always mean deficit. Correct. Like, when I say diet, I mean my consumption daily. Yeah. And what that will look like over the aggregate, mm -hmm. right? Now, I understand that's not what the marketing uh, people mean when they say diet. So for that, I get it. You're correct. Yeah. So let's just change the phrasing. Let's change the messaging. Lifestyle, Okay. If you invest in a healthy lifestyle, like sure, if you invest in a fat diet, you are going to lose a bunch of weight. You're going to regain that weight mm. because the simple biology behind it is that operating at a caloric deficit will cause you to lose weight. However, at the biological level, what's happening is your fat cells were a certain size and they don't really shrink over a short duration of time. Yeah. So you just go into starvation mode. Yeah. And then on the back end of that, on the back end of famine comes feast. Right. So what happens is your brain is chemically programmed to want to consume to the size of your fat and cells and to conserve and yes, store exactly. your, your right calories. there's yeah there's a lot of process it's why you plateau yeah because throughout that process you become a little bit more efficient mm -hmm. a lot of systems start to sh either shut down or work more efficiently but then whatever. when you're in that storing mode and then you start to eat more yes then you're going to even gain even faster exactly so it's not irreversible though right over time when you do what this woman did in this video mm -hmm. over three years yeah. and you gradually go through that process, those cells begin to shrink mm -hmm. and you create a new normal for your brain, for your body, for your consumption. Right. So to say that dieting is, uh, is a scam yeah. in a marketing sense, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, like in, selling diet 
you know, yes. diet stuff. Yes, diet the the, the dieting and, industry yeah. is a scam. If yeah. you want to play, if you want to frame pills. it that way, I agree with you. You're 100 percent correct. But actually, being mindful of the way you consume, of the way that you work, right, and the lifestyle that you live, you're a fucking madman. Yeah. If you think you have no control there, no. and that's the narrative that's getting pushed now. Yeah, I don't like that. Of course not. It's 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 very detrimental for a lot of reasons. One, it excuses very poor behavior, mm -hmm. which I don't care. Live your fucking life. Yeah. Do what you want to do. But, but you know what that leads to? People being unhappy and then people fucking projecting their shit all over yeah. us on Twitter. <laughs> right. And then shaming people who are doing a really good job. Yeah. And then telling people who are posting their motivation that they're being they're causing suicide. Right. <laughs> or know? dragging this woman because it's an ad. It's an ad. Yeah. It's like she's offering you coaching why do you think she got offered to be in an ad <laughs> why no, do you think no. she's able to make an ad that's the biggest thing yeah. is it's not like this is a corporate ad right she it's doesn't her, work it's for her company right? yeah she doesn't work it's not even a company service, her service it's literally not even a company yeah. she's just a fucking personal trainer right okay and like to think that the world would be better off without personal trainers is an asshole take yeah that's like saying the world would be better off without doctors and scientists and other industry leaders that can help you live a better life I and mean, also like what better advertisement than her own work that she Correct. did herself she's not demonstrating some sort of scam yeah she doesn't have she's saying, something she's mixing in a fucking look like me right like, she's showing you how hard it is right there's no scam there right it i'm is hard i'm overly passionate about this because i think that it's an area that i'm knowledgeable enough that i can really push back yeah when it comes to you know language uh choices of words that may alienate certain groups uh -huh. i have to defer right because a i'm not a part of those groups and b uh i certainly don't spend enough time studying language yeah to to really know more than what i can infer through logic mm -hmm. right but when it comes to this I'm 25 years into really committing myself to yeah. these lifestyles and understanding the science, the biology, the, the kinesthetics, all, all mm -hmm. of this, right? And I've seen it change and evolve. Yeah. And I understand how young it is because poker's done the same at a much more rapid rate. Mm -hmm. We don't have solvers and sims when it comes to fitness, nutrition, and diet, right? Yeah. I'm it's sure way too complex. Be. It would be Track so Track all our data. I mean, we're just getting to the point of wearables and nobody yeah. knows what the fuck to do with the data. I know, but right? the, but I feel like all that data will be able to, I'm sure they're using it to develop. It will shit, be, so. it, it will be helpful, I think, because uh, for anybody who's like interested in this type of stuff, epidemiology is like, uh, it's really one of the most fascinating sectors of science because it has its place. Like it's really necessary, mm -hmm. but it's so uncontrolled yeah. that it's almost useless. Right. It, well, it's, yeah, it's so hard to get an accurate, like, study. The, the best comparison is, um, I was talking to Thalo about this, who, by the way, uh, was very gracious and open to having discourse in spite of the fact that, like, he started with a pretty hard stance. Uh -huh. uh, but we were talking about veganism versus being an omnivore. Um, and I basically said, like, uh, you know, I don't think we know very much when it comes to the way we consume and, and uh, the benefits or, or uh, how bad it is, mm -hmm. beyond that eating whole foods is greater than eating processed foods. Being an omnivore is greater than being an extreme. So it's better than being a vegan or a carnivore. Yeah. Right? And he kind of pushed back a little bit and said like, oh, according to my research, that's not true. Like vegans kind of demonstrate that they might be the most optimal lifestyle. And I said, well, you have to dig a little bit deeper because... If you're talking about epidemiology studies, and he, he, he cited a link, mm -hmm. and in the link it said, oh, actually we were talking about red meat initially. Mm -hmm. So in the link uh, it said, red meat and processed meats uh, show strong correlation to cancer. Right. And it's like, well, of course. Because their lifestyles. Well, first, yes. So basically uh, what happens is when you lump those two together, uh, it becomes really problematic. But even if you're able to separate them, the reason why vegans tend to show up so much uh, more efficient on epidemiology studies is that veganism is a choice. Yeah. We naturally evolve into uh, a carnivoristic diet, right? Yeah. So to become vegan, you have to actively make a choice and it's a lifestyle choice mm -hmm. that requires dedication. It requires discipline and it requires a hell of a lot of planning. So ultimately what happens is you don't find vegans that are smokers or drinkers or work stressful jobs. Uh, and across the board, uh, their stress levels 
through exterior factors are just significantly lower. Yeah. And they're also eating whole foods because it's almost impossible. I mean, it's not impossible. You could just eat a shitty potato chip diet, but like Mm -hmm. it's really difficult to live as a vegan and not eat whole foods. Well, I feel like a lot of their protein sources aren't whole foods. Fair, but the 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 greater scope of what they consume yeah is largely whole foods yeah where if you look at like uh um an omnivore just an average omnivore not someone like myself who's dedicated to a lifestyle right Mm -hmm. because that's the thing there's no lifestyle attached to being an omnivore yeah it's just the default just a normal person who's so if you take ten thousand vegans and ten thousand omnivores what you're going to land on is like sub one percent will be doing bad lifestyle behaviors. They're going to sleep well. They're going to do all this stuff. Yeah. Then you look at the omnivores and you're going to have people with like high stress jobs. Right. You're going to have people who smoke, drink, cope, all of this stuff because They're a big not, part. Like veganism is like you're, you are regimented yes. just by being a vegan. Correct. But like you could be an omnivore and be regimented or you could be not regimented. And like, the majority are obviously going to fall and not especially when you include the processed meats. Yeah. Because now when you can conv- when you include the convenience foods, yeah. what you find is much higher levels of people who work stressful jobs, mm-hmm. much higher levels of people who drink and smoke and do all these coping mechanisms because convenience is their number one priority. Yeah. They don't care about what they consume. Yeah. There's no picking and choosing sort of anything just healthy. Like a sampling. Yeah. Issue. So does that does that then prove that red meat does not cause cancer? No. no. But what it does is it disproves almost every single epidemiology study out there because there's it's almost impossible to get a large enough sample of people who live some sort of strict balanced omnivore diet yeah. compared to veganism. I also just feel like your everyone's body is different. That that's another thing. So the way you process certain things is going to be different. That's also very true. So individuals depending on your genetics your ethnicity all these things uh you you grow differently into your palate and Mm -hmm. what your body needs so that's another variable that they can't really isolate for and we can kind of see this throughout the dawn of or throughout the 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 past of history right we look by region and everybody consumes very differently to the landscape yeah if we look at inuits they have like the highest fat diet of any human to ever live but they don't really show signs necessarily of negative health correlations due to that right Mm -hmm. and then you look at like um you know the i I hate to even reference it because it was a debunked study that was absolute garbage but Mm -hmm. like the china study was uh studying like um indigenous tribes within uh inland china Uh that mostly consumed a vegan diet because they didn't have access to water or, or to like the ocean or anything like that uh, and like they demonstrated that they lived very healthily. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's a myriad of cultures they just adapted differently. To right. Their, their there's a myriad of cultures throughout. Like if you look at Greek people and Italians, they live on a Mediterranean diet and they're extremely healthy. And, and, you know, basically we're built to adapt to our surroundings, yeah. but we're not necessarily built to eat Oreos. Right. And that's the biggest issue yeah. is that as a like con- especially a, like if you give a if you imagine giving a pilgrim mcdonald's spray right. and they're like freaking out right <laughs> they're just <laughs> what, dying what is this yeah the, like they would see the way we see poisonous mushrooms yeah um but yeah like as a first world nation that has everything in excess uh we've now become fat mm-hmm. and to say that we haven't is ignoring the empirical data yeah we've clearly gotten fatter over time so it's like how on earth can we ever go back and now point and say, well, dieting is a scam, and this is just a byproduct of genetics. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you, you're, you're 100% building a narrative just to push what you want to be true. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, and a lot of times it can stem from people not wanting to make changes in their own life, so they just sort of say, like, this is the way It really it feels is. like projection. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot, most of this to. stuff, like, when people are really amped up and sort of spouting off things that seem off is usually they are projecting because it's and i'm we've all projected before like everyone knows what it's like to be in that state where you really do think that this is like an outside issue and it's really not but like in that moment you really do think that like no 100 percent. and i have empathy for that it's like fuck man i i i throughout my life have learned a lot of hard lessons Mm -hmm. through that methodology right mm-hmm. and unfortunately it's like i learned very well that way so i keep 
Yeah. I keep putting myself <laughs> in a projecting. shit spot to to kind of like be told otherwise. Yeah. But as I as I get older, I I've learned to uh, implement some uh, some protocols in place where it's like I double check in with myself. Yeah. And yeah, that's like where the growth really becomes or, or comes from. And again, like all of this stems back now to a mental health issue. Oh yeah. And to think that like all of us across the board, 100%, don't align on the fact that we all have mental health issues. Yeah. Is crazy. It's I a know. spectrum. I know. Right? Some people are... Everyone has mental health. It's, yes. And so yeah, you, everyone has a state of mental health. And I, I think that's what's so infuriating to me is that like we're getting to a point now where rather, try, rather than trying to optimize our physical health, we're shaming people who do that. Yeah. Because somehow it makes us feel uncomfortable yes. at, at large. Yes. And we haven't even begun to breach the mental health realm yet, right? We're still very young in physical health. Yeah. We've barely even touched the mental health realm. I know. So if you're telling me that the progression is going to be that as we start to dig in further into mental health, we're going to start to shame people who take it seriously. Like, come on, I'm yeah. fucking out on this. Yeah, like, I know. Deplatform everybody who well, well, is out there here. There is a bit of that. I mean, it's like there's there are ways that, and especially I think it's probably easier with mental stuff because you can sort of rationalize oh i am this way because of this and i'll always be this way and anyone who says otherwise is you know discriminating against me when yeah. it's really like no you actually like there is another there is another side of reality that you can live on right if you wish right right and again like you know we're barely scratching the surface i don't want to get yeah. into yeah. are we in the sim <laughs> we are <laughs> kind of yeah. discussion especially because i gotta catch a fucking flight so uh thank you guys for coming to my ted talk uh, I appreciate it. Melissa, you've been a fantastic co-pilot today. Thank you. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, in order of how I enjoy you the most on this show, <laughs> it is one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. all six of us, uh -huh. and then three. I know. Three is not my jam. Three? It feels awkward. Three, you get a little bit snippy. I just, you come at me a little yeah, bit. Maybe I do. Yeah. Maybe I do. Oh, by the way, I, I've been corrected. I'm not allowed to say snippy because right. apparently... Uh, I don't know. Uh, apparently, <laughs> it's a term that like men use towards women. I say it to everybody. Guys get snippy. I say to say fresh. I say it to land. land I would never say fresh. What am I in the 1950s? <laughs> <laughs> I say it to land it all the time. Yeah. And why are you being snippy? He does get snippy. Uh, I think maybe it's Pittsburghese. It's possible. Maybe. But anyway, uh, I don't mean it in a condescending way. No, obviously, I, I just mean you know you come fucking for me. Yeah, uh, I do. I'll be out <laughs> with Brian uh, on some lake in the middle of the Smoky Mountains, turning my phone off, leave me the fuck alone for the next five days. Uh, if I don't come back, Melissa, the show's yours. Um, you have the next three days to do as you wish. Uh, mm -hmm. As the audience- Dude, Leave comments on what, what you'd like to see. Leave comments for what kind of content you want out Should of Melissa. Should I just find someone off the street and bring them in? I, I think, well, without somebody here to, to, to mitigate, the hinge idea is probably off. But man, I love that idea I know. of the first date literally being an interview. I know. Can I interview my, uh, you on this podcast for um, <laughs> our first date? Right. Like any guy who agrees to that is for sure a keeper or, you know, a probably psychopath. Probably not. Well, it's one or the other. You get probably the, not. It's an extreme. You get to learn very quickly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, anyway, you'll be, you'll be heading the show for the next three days or one day or two days. It's really up to you. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, not sure of time or day that we'll run our next episode, but it will be somewhere between tomorrow and next Monday. Uh, we appreciate you guys as always. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what five foods you would use if you had to live for one year off of and five. If Diet Coke would whole be food. Included. Diet Coke is out. Uh, <laughs> The caveat to this is that spices that have no calories and are a solo ingredient are included, like salt and pepper, uh, and drinks that have no calories and one ingredient are also included, like water and Diet sparkling Coke. water. No, not Diet Coke. <laughs> Tea, for instance. Uh, coffee. You guys can have that stuff. Let us know what you would choose, what your five would be. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.